Hi, my name is Zawilda Jimenez, and I've created the student-facing video in partnership with Maria Friedland from the Division of Multilingual Learners. Hi, friends. Thank you for coming to Social Studies today. I'm really excited to go on to our next lesson. Today, we're going to focus on the introduction portion of the Unit 4, Day 3 lesson titled Compromises at the Constitutional Convention. And our focus question is, what were the challenges of creating a new nation? Our lesson objective is to explore a variety of sources to determine the different viewpoints that led to significant compromises in the early drafting of the United States Constitution. I hope you guys have had a chance to review page six of your um, Passport to Social Studies Unit 4 workbook, and that you had a chance to go over the video of during the introduction portion of the lesson, reflect on the guiding question, and listen to and think about some of the guiding questions attached to some of the videos from our independent work today. Today we're going to focus on Analyzing the source set B, the three-fifths compromise. Now, as always, I highly encourage you to use our tools to help you understand um, the sources that we're analyzing and the videos. You can always use tools like rewordify.com. If you are... Um, on Google Chrome, you can use the Read Aloud Google Chrome extension to support you and listen to some of the text. When watching videos, I encourage you to pause as many times as you need to, rewind, and really think about the questions, the guiding questions to help you understand the video and how it relates to what we've learned so far in Unit 4 and today's, les today's lesson, as well as what the information we're learning means for America's journey. Now, some of today's work will ha make you have some feelings, um, possibly negative feelings, because they deal with aspects of racism and treating people unfairly. Feel free to pause come back to the video if you need to take a break or speak to someone at home or a friend, an adult, a teacher that can help you work through some of those feelings that you're having. They are totally understandable. Any questions that you have um, about today's lesson or any questions that you think of based on today's lesson and some of the current events, um, please, 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 please feel free to share your feelings and talk to someone um, about those feelings. So if you are paying attention to some of the information from the introduction portion um, and the Connecticut Compromise, you are seeing a pattern of the states not getting along. And it reminds me of King George's warning from lesson one in this unit, right? He warns America um, saying that, you know, it's not gonna be easy to be your own country and you're going to wish you had never made this decision, right? So right now, the states are arguing with each other. They can't seem to agree on anything. And some of the big ideas that came out of the um, the first part of the Constitutional Convention is that their arguing and debating took about a hundred days. Um, and they were trying to figure out how are we going to get along and how is each state going to be heard and make sure that the laws that are passed are fair to each state. Now, some of the reasons for why the states took so long is because states have different populations. Um, the states in the North, for example, don't have as many slaves compared to the states in the South. And also different states, states like Virginia, for example, have 
a higher population or more people live in states like Virginia than they do like in Connecticut or Rhode Island, these smaller states. So when you think about the debate between the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan, okay, the compromise was to make sure that all states had equal representation or an equal say in the laws that were going to affect all of them as a whole. Right, so that's the big idea there. Now, here, we're going to focus on the three-fifths compromise. And you already know from math, three-fifths, right, is a fraction or a part of a whole, right? So what I want you to do now is pause my video and click on this video and begin to watch it you can watch it once all the way through to listen for the information and then watch it a second time to answer these two questions, right? First question is, how does the three-fifths compromise relate to the Declaration of Independence, right? What's the connection there, if any? And at, by the end of the video, who are the people represented in the preamble of the Constitution? Who does the preamble specifically talk about? All right, so work on that and I'll see you back in a few minutes. All right, so the three-fifths compromise is controversial because on the one hand, slaves, we know slaves, all people are people, but the compromise that they decided on stated that slaves are not a whole person, but a fraction of a person. Right, and that was a result of the North arguing with the South, right? Because everyone was wanted to make sure that all states had a fair say when voting for laws or voting for anything that would change, make changes for the country. Um, no one wanted one state to have more power or more say or more of a vote than another, but it if you thought that the three-fifths compromise contradicted or went against the Declaration of Independence, you were right yet again. And then you should think about who are the people represented in the preamble of the Constitution, right? The part we the people, it's not everyone. And if, the, if you have examples in your head, like it's not women, it's not Native Americans, it's not slaves, it's not Black people, you are correct, okay? So I want you to look over here. Now that we have the information of the in the video and the Great Compromise, this document, the census, the first census of the United States, gives you a breakdown of all the people that were living in these states at the time, right? So the census we still do today, um, every few years. The census, the goal of the census is to understand how many people are living in different states and different are uh, different parts of the state. Um, and that helps the federal government give out, use the tax money to give out to, you know, make schools or increase or lower taxes. Um, for there's many other reasons, but the census, even though the first one started in 1790, we still do it today except it looks completely different from this, right? So I want you to pause the video and think about what you notice, right? So I noticed, for example, um, when I look at the column of slaves, there are some states that had no slaves at all or had a very small number. And then there are states like Virginia that had almost 300,000 slaves. Right, and how do those numbers compare to the total number of people that live in the state as a whole? Right, so these comparisons helped support the three-fifths compromise. So as you go through these source sets, 
here is a breakdown of some of the information that we heard in the video, right? So let's see if we can try to understand, get in the minds of the Southern states argument versus the Northern states argument, right? So here the Southern states say, slaves should be counted in our population so that we get more representation in Congress so that our voices can be heard louder and we could have more of a vote in Congress to get what we want. But at the same time, slaves should not be counted for tax purposes because they are property, not people. Right, so I'm seeing, I'm noticing that the Southern states want to use slaves to their advantage when it comes to making laws and making sure they get things that they want from the federal governments, right? From the president, from Congress. Um, but the Southern states do not want to count slaves um, when it comes to paying taxes because they claim slaves are not people. So therefore they, they shouldn't be paying taxes for those people. Those people are property, right? The, the Southerners, um, the white men bought those slaves using money and they own them. So they're not people, they're property, okay? The Northern states had a different argument, all right? I'm gonna read it to you and I want you to think about what were what was the Northern states point of view? or perspective. Slaves should not be counted in the population because they are not prop they are property, not people. Okay? Slaves should be counted for tax purposes because money is made from their labor. Right? So the jobs that slaves are doing brings in money for those southern states. Okay, and then here is the, the compromise. For the purposes of representation and taxation, slaves would be counted as three-fifths of a person. Okay, so for example, if we're looking here, this would be one person. A slave would be three-fifths of a whole. So one slave would not count as one vote you would need two slaves to count as one whole. I'm sorry, as one vote. You would need two slaves to count as one whole, one whole person, or one vote. Okay, I'm already seeing that that goes completely against the Declaration of Independence, and I hope you are too. All right, you can listen here on this slide for the audio, and then I want you to take all the information from the video, from our discussion, and I want you to jot down in your Google Slides the answer to, to these questions. Um, you have the choice to um, type them in and hand it in your Google Classroom, or you can record a video or an audio of yourself discussing the answers to each of these questions. Okay, and finally, we have this quote here, it's called the delegates, right? The people that were sent to the convention. So the delegates commitment to union over master, meaning crushed, beat, succeeded. Their commitment to liberty. What does this quote mean? And what effect could it have on a nation to commit more to union than to liberty? What are the consequences that could happen when the delegates commit more to union than to liberty? All right, so this question is giving me a hint that there's problems that are still going to come up. Even though they de the delegates debated for 100 days and they came up with these compromises, if you're thinking about the three-fifths compromise, if you're thinking about the differences between the northern states and the southern states, um, if you're thinking about the information in the video and the questions about representation, what sort of problems do you predict will happen 
in the future. All right, friends, thank you so much for coming to Social Studies today. As always, it has been a pleasure. Make sure to pause this video, rewind, rewatch whatever you need to support you in completing your tasks for today. I can't wait to read your work and I'll see you next time.